I'm doing a cyanotype test sprint now. It's a super sunny day with a very high UV index. And if that one works out, I will do a couple more. I already coated and prepared lots of paper sheets and I want to make a lot of cyanotypes and then later pen plot on them as little goodies for my patrons. And if you've never done cyanotype before, it's a simpler version of a photography exposure. You can use lots of different materials. And if you go for a paper, just make sure that it handles water well. So for example, watercolor paper like I use here is a great choice. And then it's rather easy to mix the cyanotype solution yourself. Only problem is that you need to weigh out very small portions. So make sure you have a scale that can go to preferably fractions of a gram. And luckily my coffee scale is able to do that. The two chemicals needed for cyanotype are potassium ferricyanide and ferric ammonium citrate. Both chemicals just get dissolved in water, so you end up with roughly the same volume of fluid for each chemicals. And when you mix them both together in the end, it becomes UV reactive. So make sure to just prepare the amount of liquid that you actually need for your papers. And be aware you don't need much to coat a few A4 sheets of paper. It's really not that much, but it doesn't store very well. So I only mix what I need for the moment. And then you can just take a brush and coat your papers or fabrics or whatever with it. Make sure to evenly coat. I really like to have my brush strokes visible. So I paint very rough edges here. And when it's coated and dry, it's important to store it somewhere without UV contamination. And here for my first test print, I collected some leaves and a bit of grass, put it on top of the paper and everything into a foil envelope. The flatter the things are on the paper, the better the result will be. And over a span of maybe about 10 minutes, the yellowish coating will first turn blue and then into some sort of brown. And this is usually the stage where you are ready to wash out and fixate your image. And for that, you can just use regular water, swoosh it a bit around or just leave it in the water. That's usually enough. So I think these areas will wash out, wash out even more. They should all get white in the end. So here we go, nice. Went great. Let's make many more and put this one in the sun to dry. And because I was happy with the results, I started my full production run of cyanotype prints. And I grabbed an old glass frame because this weighs down the leaves even more onto the paper and I think this works even better. And I really enjoy having these worn out, nibbled on leaves. I think each one has its own story and a very even more distinct and interesting shape. And that works perfect for cyanotype. And what I was also aiming for is larger wide areas. So I only wanted to have the main leaf shape visible because you can leave the cyanotypes in the sun longer and then also little leaf veins or more details of the leaf itself will be visible in the end because more UV can reach through the leaf. But for this project, I wanted to have the shadowy prints. So I went with rather short exposure times. I think it was always around the 10 minute mark. But I also did some errors. So I wanted to save a bit of water and washed out lots of prints in the same pot with the same water. And when I hung them up to dry, I should have rinsed them another time with very clear water because in the end, some of the prints ended up with little bluish stains at the bottom where the water gathered while drying. So that's the thing next time I will take more care of. But overall, they came out super lovely. And I think making cyanotypes is the perfect thing to do if you have that artsy itch and it's a super sunny day outside and you can gather some interesting objects and splash around a bit with water. <laughs> that's what a perfect summer day for me looks like. But after the cyanotypes were finished, this is only half the work. Next step was photographing all the leaves. I put them on my pen plotter light table. That just was the easiest and perfect light source to take some snapshots where I can see a lot of leaf details. And then I fed each leaf through my graph neural network and created some stylized scribbles. That's a process that I also explained in the last video. So if you want to know more about that whole thing, uh, check that video out. And then I started plotting one AI scribbly leaf on each cyanotype print. I had a bit of a search for the 
best pen to do that. And I ended up using a thick metallic pen that has a great coverage on light as well as dark backgrounds because you have this high contrast from the cyanotype. And also the bronze color had a great contrast to both white and dark blue. But pen plotting with pump pens isn't that easy as I realized because you need to re-pump the pen every so-and-so minutes. So luckily the leaf plots were rather short, but if you do huge pen plots with these metallic pumping pens, you really need to make sure to pause the plot every, I don't know, few minutes and re-pump the pen. Otherwise there's not enough ink coming out and it will run dry really quickly. So overall, this was a very cool and quick experiment I did over a few days. I love the combination of this UV exposed cyanotype and scribbly pen plotted ink. I think they work really well together. The series overall came out really cool. And I hope my Patreons really enjoy these little artworks for their summer goodies. And I ended up with around 20 images in the series. But I don't yet have a proper name for this nice series. So if you have an idea, please let me know in the comments. And that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed this little documentation. And if you want to get some cool generative AI art goodies yourself, please consider subscribing to my Patreon or maybe my other social media feeds to see what I'm up to. Would love to meet you for my next video. See you soon. Bye bye. And have a great summer.